Next, another story from our Economist Film Project series. Tonight, a film about eco-terrorism. The Earth Liberation Front, a radical environmental activist group, was named a domestic terrorist threat by the FBI in 2001. In this documentary, Academy Award-winning filmmaker Marshall Curry follows the story of a former ELF member, Daniel McGowan. McGowan was arrested in 2005 for involvement in several fires and placed under house arrest in New York City to await trial. Here's an excerpt from the film, If a Tree Falls. In Vail, Colorado, the nation's busiest ski resort was hit today by a fire. Arson is suspected. You may have heard of the Earth Liberation Front. The Attorney General himself says it's a domestic terrorist organization. The FBI says it is one of the most dangerous groups in the country. The ELF has claimed responsibility for more than two dozen major acts of eco-terrorism since 1996. The fire bombings include attacks on lumber mills, wild horse corrals, and two meat packing plants. So far, not one of the cases has ever been solved. And authorities acknowledge they know next to nothing about the membership or the leadership of the organization. In 2001, I was involved uh, with the Earth Liberation Front. And I was involved in two separate arsons in one year. There was no one in any of these facilities. No one got hurt, no one was injured. And yet, I'm facing life plus 335 years. I was born in 1974 in Brooklyn. I moved to Rockaway when I was around three, Rockaway Beach in Queens. It's like mostly, you know, working class people. My dad was a cop in the New York Police Department. And I was a track runner and, you know, I got scholarships and stuff like that. And then when I got to college, I was like, oh, I guess I'll major in business because that's practical. I moved out west in October of 98. And I started becoming a really different person. I had never seen trees like that before. It, it had a really profound impact on me. I have memories of like, like for the first time seeing log trucks, you know, and be like, whoa. You saw the mills, or you're going into the forest and you stumble upon a clear cut. Like, it just blew me away. I couldn't believe the fact that people accepted what was going on. Just the, the arrogance of it. You know, it made me think, like, why are we being so gentle? Why are we so gentle in our activism when this is what's happening, you know? Sometimes when you see things you love being destroyed, you just want to destroy those things. The more radical environmental community have, a, in my opinion, a misconception about this industry and, and what we do. Does it have an impact? Certainly. Nobody likes the looks of a fresh harvest, but we really do regrow these trees. You know, I'm a third generation lumberman. You can't be in the lumber industry without having trees to cut. Uh, so it's ridiculous for people to think we're going to go out there and cut the last tree. We were quite surprised that, that we had been targeted. I went up to Portland and wrote the communique and sent it in. Even then, it wasn't real. It was just like still like kind of this cartoonish thing. And uh, it wasn't real until I really saw the newspapers, seeing the man from the company, I think Steve Swanson, just walking through this like charred remains. And I was just like, holy crap. It's like when you're involved with it and you're in the thick of it, it's hard to look at like all the consequences and like the real repercussions of that. Like, you know, did this action push them in a better direction? Did it scare them? Did it, did it help the movement in any capacity on old growth logging? There's lots of questions, but I don't think at the time I was asking those questions too much. 
A federal judge must determine whether the fires qualify for something called the terrorism enhancement. If the judge rules that Daniel's fires were terrorism, Daniel could be sent to a new, ultra-restrictive prison that was set up after 9-11 to house terrorists. In the media and in the courtroom, the question is debated. Eco-terrorism, terrorist acts by radical groups. Eco-terrorists. Eco-terrorism. Environmental terrorists. People need to question, like, this buzzword and how it's being used and how it's, like, just become the new communist. It's become the new, you know, it's like the boogeyman. It's a boogeyman word. It's like whoever re I really disagree with is a terrorist. Some people have the problem with, you know, calling this terrorism, but when you're basically making the threat where people go home at night wondering if they're going to be a target, um, that's what terrorism is. After the fire, uh, for, for a long time, you really looked over your shoulder. I mean, we put an alarm system in our home and uh, things like that that uh, before we hadn't thought about. You know, being a New Yorker with experiencing such serious terrorism firsthand is like, how are you going to call someone who sets fire to an empty building a terrorist? It's just inappropriate in every way, and it's an insult. The word terrorism to me is about killing humans. It's about ending innocent life. And that is the antithesis of what these people did. Concern for life was a very big part of the plan and implementation of these actions, and is why no one was ever harmed or injured in them. 1,200 incidents are being accredited to the ELF and ALF in this country, and not a single injury or death. Those statistics don't happen by accident. Terrorist acts under the definition in the law can, can vary all over the board. There's no requirement for purposes of terrorism that you physically endanger another person's life. I mean, you, you don't have to be Bonnie and Clyde to be a bank robber, and you don't have to be Al-Qaeda uh, to be a terrorist. I don't think these people are terrorists. I think uh, the people and the agencies and the industry that they're fighting are the true terrorists. When you've got big timber companies coming into the Northwest, clear-cutting old-growth forest, big oil companies with their big oil spills that uh, cost billions and billions and billions of dollars, you don't see the FBI raiding these executives' homes or anything like that. They aren't being threatened with life in prison. All they really do is just pay a fine and uh, move on to the next quarter. The, the, the old adage that, you know, one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter, it's true. You know, if you agree with their motives, wow, they're a hero. They're not a terrorist at all. If you disagree with their motives, then they're a terrorist. That's tough. Okay. That's why it's a whole lot cleaner to deal with crimes. Crime, non-crime, okay? I'm good with that. I can do that. Arson, Arson is a crime. Good, I can do that, you know? Is it terrorism? We'll, do, we'll find out. McGowan pled guilty to arson and conspiracy charges in 2007. The judge sentenced him to seven years in a special prison designed to hold terrorists. He is allowed limited communication with the outside world. The film If a Tree Falls airs on the PBS series POV on Tuesday, September 13th. Please check your local listings.